Ladies and gentlemen, near Portland, Oregon, Lake Oswego. Is there is there actually is there a lake there and everything? There's a lake there called Oswego. And, yes, and it <laughs> that's where you live. It's it, you say Portland, right? Yes, it's the first suburb south of Portland, so you know it's the same thing. Now, may I say something about my ex-wife Ronnie here? Is that she has a certain love for cities named Portland? Because, <laughs> Not necessarily. Because she worked. It was all an accident. She, she, mo she moved to Portland, Maine, which incidentally was the place all the uh, bombers for the 9-11 uh, uh, took off from, that airport. I thought it was Boston. No, he went to Boston. One of them went to Boston from uh, your airport there. I remember going to your airport in Portland to leave, and they're like, they're frisking me, and they're doing everything. And I just said, I wish you'd been this good about the bombers. You well, know, that good because and, of the bombers. and they didn't. They were not happy with that. With that, but the, no, it seems as though that's where, I think that's where Muhammad Atta took off from. Oh, he I don't started there. Those yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then you moved. What was funny is when I moved from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon, was trying to explain it to friends. Oh, Ronnie, I thought you were already there. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what is it about the name Portland? You were born in Portland. Oregon, yes. Oregon. Yes. Yeah, yeah not Portland, Maine. <laughs> the funny thing is, is when I had to leave New York, um, I knew I didn't want the South. We've lived there. It's hot. I don't want to go back. Um, I knew I didn't want the middle of the country. I like coasts. Yeah. So, and I like big cities. So that left Boston and New York and Portland and Seattle. Well, I had to leave New York because I couldn't afford it anymore. And I've been to Seattle enough that I think it has all the all the disadvantages of a big city and none of the advantages. I feel something similar for Boston. So that left Portland, Oregon, where, you know, I'd been back here to visit now and again, but I haven't really lived here since I was 15. Um, but when I was in Portland, I had chosen Portland, Maine, be, uh, the first time around, the first move, because I thought my New York friends would come visit me there more easily than on the West Coast. Guess what? More of you have come to see me here than ever did in Portland, Maine. Really? Really? Yeah. I uh, I enjoyed my... Uh, Portland, Maine was very nice, and I've hardly ever been to Portland, Oregon. I've gone through Portland, Oregon. I've stopped to take a leak in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> But I've never actually spent time in Portland, Oregon, except for the TV show Portlandia, which kind of is, is it, does it have any kind of reality to Portland or is it just meant to be comedy? You know what? It, it, it's one of the things that comes up a lot because of what my blog is about, which mm -hmm. is what it's really like to get old, is that I stopped watching Portlandia after the most of the first season because it's only about young people in Oregon. Yeah. As, as far as that shows, because nobody over the age of 25 lives here. Oh. So that's what it's that that may be what the city is like for very young people. But I don't think I don't know about everybody else. Well, of course, it's a younger person or they're in their 40s, I guess, who, who do the show. So I suppose they write to what they know. You know. Yeah, you, you, you can't blame everything on it. You can't call yourself a writer if you can only write about yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, you're gonna, you're if you if you're a comedian, you 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 relate to things that happen to you every day, and that becomes the humor. Now they don't, I don't think they live in Portland. I don't think that's their hometown or anything like that. They just chose to do a show about Portland. And, uh, there was another show, and not too long ago, that was set and shot here. Um, it was called Grimm. Was it called Grimm? I never watched it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Grimm was done there, yeah. But it was about people as opposed to only a certain age of people. Well, it was a horror show. Yeah, well, and, I mean, and, and what, all kinds of genres. And, and what's know? the most horrible kind of person? An old person, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they look spookier than young people look. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, you. So, what are those all DVDs behind you? Yes, they are. Do you still watch DVDs? Well, you see, you may notice there's a there's a blank area over here. Maybe you can see it, and that is because I've taken a lot of the ones that I really liked and put them on uh, into files for computers. Right. Because 
those are more playable now and then I don't have to have all these but but you I, do but I still have you know about uh, several thousand left so it's think of all of the formats we have gone through not oh, yeah. so much for video but because they ca that came later but all of the formats that we've had to go through for keeping up with all our music I mean we started with you and my you and me at our age with 78 rpms yeah then it was most we there were a few EPs and then there were 45s and then 33s and then eight track and then cassettes and there's something else in there I think uh, then, and finally uh, MP3s well CDs and then oh CDs I miss miss you, CDs you yes. miss CDs and yes. um, um, yeah no that, that you pretty much got it uh, set but that's over a period of in my case 78 years so. <laughs> You know, we, you know, I think we were using stone axes when I was born, and now, you know, we use metal ones. Uh, but, but you know what it did, all of those changes, format changes, is over the years, what you had to do when you were ready to replace with a new format, mm -hmm. is you had to decide which of what you already had was worth buying again. <laughs> well, here, let me, give you, let me give you one example. Uh, they came out with a James Bond VHS box set years ago i guess maybe up in the, at, at that point it was like 10 movies okay then they come out with the i laser disc you forgot laser disc oh, i laser, had a laser oh, we disc were collection music, not video, though. i had a laser disc collection uh and and i bought all the james bond pictures on laser disc then they released them on VHS in a box set. I bought that. Do you that. really like James Bond that then, much? I have every, almost every James <laughs> Bond set. And believe it or not, there are like about six or seven of them. You know. The latest one is over there in the corner. And it's every movie through uh, Skyfall. So. Is Skyfall, that's a James Bond movie? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For is those... this because you once did a radio show using the name James Bond? <laughs> well, that has something to do with it. But, you know, I for some reason, I, I, I just always got the newest box set. And I said, to hell with that. And uh, now, you know, I keep everything on, on files that I like because it takes up less room. This, this, I could get rid of all of this if I put every one of them on a DV, on a, uh, a, a video file, and it would take up, uh, it wouldn't even take up a whole disk drive. You, you know. know, I did that only once in my life. I took all my music from CDs and transferred to MP3s. I yeah. had to do it every night after work for months before I finished. I will never do that again. Yeah, but once you do that, you've got them in a more palatable form so far as space is concerned and all of that. You know, plus, you know what I hated about the CD? The worst part about the CD was the jewel case. Those things kept breaking and kept breaking and kept breaking, you know. You would buy one. I don't know one. about you. I didn't have that problem. What? <laughs> of breaking CD cases. Why? They never broke for well, me. They, they were fragile. They were ridiculous. No, they're not. And the hinges, the hinges would come off. Out. The hinges would fall apart on them. And, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. I had to go out and buy a bunch of cases for them that were good cases. And, and replace a lot of them when they broke. So, anyway. So, what's happening in the world of getting older? Uh, it, it, you know, what issues are affecting your audience? Uh, she, of course, has a wonderful blog called timegoesby.net, which is a blog. It looks like a web page, but it's a blog. And uh, she, uh, you know, deals with the things that have to do with aging, which, by the way, I don't care what age you are listening to this program, eventually you're going to have to deal with it. Is that, is that? Eventually. Yeah. I just, I think that um, there are different things that are important at different ages. I think we should all, in the way that all adults, it's starting very, very, very young, always look out for small children. You'll be sure they don't run in the street if you're around or you know, do something that's going to maim or kill them, that we all watch out for them carefully. Then there, the other end of that is that as old people get less, let's just in one, one instance of something that can go wrong, of being less sure on their feet, they need a cane or sometimes a wheelchair, 
we're not grown-ups are not as good as being careful about old people that could, that could be harmed easily mm-hmm. as they are about young children and let me give you an example when i was coming home from the hospital after 11 days after my surgery last june there's a long hallway when you go through the front door of the hospital a long hallway to stairs that go down to the street where you get in the car and i had been cut open you know from straight down my middle, the whole middle of me. Mm -hmm. And it was only 11 days, so I was feeling very vulnerable and I couldn't walk very well. And and a friend was pushing me in a wheelchair to get down to the stairs where I could walk down when we get there. And coming toward me in the other direction was a mother with, who was pushing what apparently was her her father probably, as old as he was, Mm -hmm. in a wheelchair, and two kids chasing each other down the hall. And they veered chasing each other to my side and bumped into my wheelchair. And I had visions of being tossed on my side, my scar being ripped open, you know. I still had staples in it. Yeah. And um and I realized we do that all the time, that we don't pay, we pay attention to children to be very careful not to run in the street, for example, but we don't pay as much attention to old people. They're dispensable. And it was, I was so frightened. I was feeling so fragile. And I watch very carefully in a very different way now when I see old people in the street. Are they walking very slowly? Are they steady on their feet? Do they need help down the stairs? Mm -hmm. In ways that even I, who've been writing about this for nearly 15 years, I hadn't paid close attention until that happened to me. And I think it's a common occurrence. We just don't make the same distinction about old people that maybe need help or keeping an eye on as we do young people. Now, Kate, my, my question to you would be, can you, is there such a thing as helping too much? Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. I had a friend who years ago interviewed George Shearing, the jazz pianist. And George Shearing, Lucky was, him. <laughs> George, George Shearing was blind. Uh-huh. And he said, what is the worst part about being blind? He said, there's nothing really terrible about being blind except people who want to help you. He said, I've almost had my arm ripped off by people trying oh, to help me. Absolutely. But all you have to do is is a simple, can I help you? And people are, then can yeah. say, no, I'm doing yeah. fine. Yeah. That's all you need In to do. In other words, don't assume that you need to help. Ask right. what help they might need. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so if you see, let's say, someone hesitating at a, at a curb, mm-hmm. stepping down, mm-hmm. you can say, can I help you get down that curb? And they can say yes, or they can say yes, or they can say, no, I think I can manage. I'm just slow, or whatever they want to say, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's that's very simple to get around. And I think that Shearing had a point. You know, we can yeah. overdo those things. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was something he he lived in, you know, a situation he lived through, and uh, it uh, it it was a uh, uh, how can we put it? It was a. Uh, um, um, it, it, it was just something that he had to deal with on a rather constant basis. So, you know, it's uh, whatever. Hold on a second. I just, I, I, my screen froze up here and I'm trying to fix it here so that I can. Okay, well, we'll, we'll use that. Okay, there we go, folks. Okay, following along in the yeah. same way is, you know, I've always thought of curb cuts in and. Mm-hmm. In, in, on sidewalks when you get to the corner. Yeah. I always thought of curb cuts for like mothers with, you know, strollers for their babies and people with um, uh, bicycles or something like that. Um, and in the past few years, I've realized that they're really good for old people just walking. They don't have to deal with the curb. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> or in wheelchairs. Uh, it hadn't occurred to me when I was younger. And one really important thing about um uh, what would be uh of how we help people that may be disabled in some way is that anything is good for old people that helps old people and an example are i don't know if you have them there in new york but here most of the grocery stores along all the aisles have magnifying glasses hanging so you can read the small print on the can or the package you're trying to buy yeah and more and more of them are putting benches in supermarkets so old people can stop and rest but anything that you do for old people that helps them Mm -hmm. always helps people of every age and that's what people have to understand when 
municipalities and other entities start thinking about how much money it costs to make life easier for old people. You're never only helping old people. In the case of a bench, maybe you're helping a mother with a fussy child in the supermarket uh, right. who won't shut up. Right. So she can sit down for a few minutes and calm the kid. Or maybe her feet are tired, you know, and she needs to sit down. Um, and that's really important when um, when governments are considering spending of that kind to help old people because they help everybody. Does the government care about helping old people? Do you really have the feeling that they genuinely care about old people or they just put up with them? You know, I, I don't, don't get, think I've I, ever put any great deal of thought to that. That's a well, really terrible question. Well, no, but it, I don't it, mean terrible I, to ask. I feel I mean, I, awful thing to think about. I have this feeling that in many ways the government is out to kill us early. Here's how, why I say that. What, what do they do when they say, we need money, we're spending too much money, what program shall we cut? What oh, is Social the Security first and Medicare. one? Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> now those are, Medicare, I gotta tell you, Medicare is a lifeline when you get older, okay? Tell me about it. I'm not employed, I'm on a limited income, my Social Security, my wife works, but I'm lucky for that. But the fact of the matter is that aside from that, the one thing medically that I have is Medicare, and thank God through sag after I got a great supplemental program. Uh, but the fact is that if they cut away Medicare, wait a minute, hold on, folks. What happens to old people? You one know. of the ways they first cut it that makes it difficult for old people, it's not directly to you and me and other people who use Medicare, they start chipping away at how much they pay the doctors and the hospitals. Oh, and the that's getting terrible already. I feel sorry for yes. my doctors. Yes. And that means there's there are doctors that just can't afford to take Medicare and especially Medicaid patients anymore. And that's what that's before they've come to take it away from us that we won't you know, we won't pay yeah. as much for whatever it is, you know, make you pay for half of it instead. First they're doing that. You know, and then there's Paul Ryan, who have, you know has wanted to complete, completely cut Social Security. And the thing about Paul Ryan and Social Security is that he got through, I think I told you this, that he got through college on Social Security because his father died young. But he still wants to take away Social Security. What, what, what is, what, what's in his head? What's in any of their heads? I mean, it's almost like they, they <laughs> figure... I guess maybe they figure old people won't complain because they're too invalided to, to complain or whatever, you know. And and it's just, and I think that if they were to like cut Medicare or something, there would be less of a hue and cry about that than a lot of other things, uh, even the gun thing. Uh, less of a hue and cry about that because it's just affecting old people. Forget that. It doesn't affect me. I'm young, right? I think there would be a, a good amount of of yelling and screaming about Medicare. And also, whenever they do surveys about such things, Social Security is the most popular uh, government program that America has. There's nothing that is more popular. It's, it's the percentage numbers are up there around 90 that every of every age, not just old people approving. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that if you tried to do anything about Social Security, drastic, they're already chipping away at it. Um, that there will be a gigantic anything that would cut the monthly income from it would the, the hue and cry you'd be able yeah, well, to get I mean, from to be, my place to, to begin yours. with. That, let's be honest, that's money they owe us. You know, yes. it, it's not like we, we got it for free. We paid for it as we worked all these years. Okay, and it's called an earned benefit, it, not an entitlement. Right, you brought that up, and I think that's a great way of putting it. But now let's get to Medicare. Okay, yes. if that were stripped away, as Ryan would like to see it done. And he's not the only one, let's be fair. What is that. going to replace health care for older people? Nothing. God, what, do you, what do you do at this point? Because we planned our whole lives for what was available to us and what we paid into and what we were able to save our whole lives for their, when we, when, and by the way, it's not that we can't work anymore, many of us, they just won't hire us because we have gray hair or no hair. Right, you know? exactly. Um, no doesn't hair. Doesn't mean we... <laughs> um, is that why you wear a hat? All not the time? Re not really. It's just I mean I mean I don't think this looks unattractive. Okay, 
Uh, but uh, I do it because, but to begin with, guys who are bald wear caps not to hide the baldness, but because if they don't and they're out in the sun. Oh, it's, you get cold. Oh, you also get cold in the wintertime. Yeah, now when I had hair, I, that was my cap. You know, right. I mean, and, and during the winter, you need it for the cold. And but you know what? You're you're almost 15 years older, I think, 10, 15, 10 or 15 years older than your father when he died. But and he was in his mid 60s and he had a gorgeous. Head no, he was still. he was 59. I mean, he still had a beautiful head of hair. Yeah, He did have a good head of hair. Well, you, but you 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 get it from your your mother. You don't get it from your father. Who says uh, supposedly you get it from your, no, from your maternal grandfather. My fraternal grandfather was bald. Okay. Okay. So yes. go figure. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, um, where, where were we? Oh, so anyway, all I'm saying is I just think less people, I, you, I don't want to have to see it happen so that I can say, see, I was right. <laughs> Please. But. Uh, less people would complain about the fact that people got done, Medicare got done away with, than uh, a lot of other issues that we have in this society. And this, you know, I feel that Paul Ryan, by saying he wants to do away with Medicare, is out to kill me. Okay, because you know, right now more... I don't, I don't need major medical care right now, but who knows down the line? Like you didn't well, think you did like either. What happened to me? Yeah. But more and more By the people way, in, in case, Washington, in which case of course they, means... In, wait a minute. In case they don't know, uh, uh, Ronnie uh, came down with a touch of the pancreatic cancer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you should see what a touch of that is like. Yeah. Um, there, when I, a, lot of, a lot more voices, when I say that, I might be talking about five at the moment, yeah. are talking about single payer for everybody, you know, Medicare for everybody. Right. And the fact is that all Western democracies consider health care a right and people pay a higher taxes not just like our little medicare tax but on their general taxes to support health care uh, for everybody and i surely would be willing to do that to be guaranteed that you can't be turned away which is how it works in all of the western democracies i'm not saying there aren't some problems with those health care systems but nothing like the problems we have have you ever noticed every once in a while they don't do enough of it Every once in a while, a local TV station, or sometimes the national, will cover a medical clinic or a dental clinic. And a whole bunch of doctors come from around a certain area. Mm -hmm. They set up tents, and people come who, can't, who don't have medical coverage and who don't ha can't afford to see doctors, and they can go and see a doctor. Or and sometimes it's a dental clinic. And by right. the way, Medicare does not cover dentistry. No, I know. And it doesn't cover hearing aids. Um, and it doesn't cover teeth unless it, the teeth are related to some other problem in your body uh which is something it's a whole thing we could discuss sometime about why that is um and we have these things especially in the good weather are all over the united states and there are lines and lines and lines out the doors of people who can't afford to go to a doctor yeah. that's in the united states of america it's and terrible. nobody makes a big deal of it it's terrible it's terrible. Also, also in a lot of countries, uh, let's talk about younger people. Uh, uh, free education, even into college, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, there are certain things that other countries feel is not a right. It is a necessity. It is something you need to have. And the idea of people not having medical care. I mean, the reason the British started the British health system was because of World War II. They felt they owed themselves a, a gift. And this I didn't was, know that. And this was the, yeah, this was initiated right after the war. They decided that gift was going to be that everybody could have health care for free. Mm -hmm. And you know something? Doctors don't starve over there. They get two hundred thousand dollars a year, maybe more. They they also get paid for uh, they get paid extra for patients whose health is kept at a good clip you know in other words they look at their record of how healthy their patients are and if they're healthy enough they give them a little bonus too so i didn't know any of that yeah i mean it's it's pretty damn good they are they've been taught you know there are still those guys in england who keep going well we got to do away with uh with uh, i forget what it's called uh, national health that's it we right. got to do away with national health uh but most of the time they get yelled down yeah. I want to make a complete circle here because I think you said earlier that you don't understand people 
who want to take away health care yeah. or Social Security. Yeah. And I that's one of the puzzles that I have that I think about from time to time is whether it's Paul Ryan or anywhere else, anyone else. Um, is what do those people think? Who, who, by the way, the people in Congress have their own health care that is just sensationally good. Yeah. What do they think everybody is going to do without those things? Um, or without doing something about the costs of medical coverage for people in the in-between years? I'll give you the answer, the one they'll give you. Well, we think that private industry could take care of that. You know, the privatization of all of that would be just fine. That these companies would, look at what they're doing to us now for just what little health care you buy out there. It's it's horrible. I mean, even, uh, it used to be that you could get, there was a, there's a thing, we're going over our 25 minutes, but I got, I got we got to get this in. Uh, there was like a, you and I are going to solve the problems of well, the Well, we're United not going to solve today. the problem. Now I forgot what I was going to say. See, that's another thing. We need some kind of mental health. Uh, <laughs> what was your name again? <laughs> it, it's getting harder every day to remember, okay? <laughs> you know, there was this ad on TV about a woman who got Alzheimer's and the way her husband found out is she left her keys in the refrigerator. And I've done that at age 30. Well, I'm waiting for the day I find keys in the refrigerator, and it's either mine or it's Marjorie's, you know? Uh, well, I actually did that when I was in my 30s, that I looked was trying to leave the house and looking all over for the keys. Yeah. And I don't know why I opened the refrigerator door, but there they were next to the milk. <laughs> oh, well, and I, I guess that ad was just trying to point up what... Speaking of ads, I wanted to say one thing about it, <laughs> about ads before we go is you know that the doctors have pronounced me cancer-free from pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And, of course, it can always re recur. And you know, unlike you, I'm not a hypochondriac, but it's in the, a shadow in the back of my mind. Yeah. But at any rate, right now, I'm cancer-free. You have no idea what happens. It, it, it just that you become more alert to it is it seems that every time I turn on television, there's some commercial for pancreatic cancer. I really, really? don't want to hear about I have, pancreatic I, cancer. I haven't anymore. seen a single ad for pancreatic cancer. And, you know. and and when I, you know, a few times, I didn't delve deeply into pa pancreatic cancer, but I did some looking around and reading some stuff online. Yeah. It follows me everywhere online. There's always a little <laughs> ad somewhere about pancreatic cancer. <laughs> well, I just want them to shut up. Well, uh, uh, well Probably it's that Analytics Corporation that uh, Analytica, right? Yes. Analytica, and they uh, they also did a thing on old people and found out where to place the pancreatic cancer commercials for you. <laughs> well, actually, from what I heard on some TV show this morning, is that it, it allows them to go out and see what you search for too. They can they can attach searches to certain people. Yeah. So I get the pancreatic ads, and you get whatever you get. <laughs> Medical. I get the ads for DVDs. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's time for us to go. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, it's far too soon. I love having these uh, conversations with you. But you're... I'm not sure that there's an audience for our chit chat. You, you know? know something? I don't give a shit. It's my <laughs> network. I pay for it. Uh, it goes out. Uh, if people watch it, even a few of them, and they they are interested in what we have to say, then that that that's enough for me. I'm never going to make a penny off of this thing, so I don't care about ratings. You know, uh, I would love thousands of people to watch what you have to say because I think all of it is very important and vitally important to every American. Because age is somewhere where, if we're lucky, we're all going to wind up. OK. Right. And if you think this was a boring conversation, you're going to be having that conversation constantly once you reach 60. Every dinner you go out to with other people your age, you're all going to say the same thing. Well, how's your uh, what you, what's happening with your uh, uh, health insurance and blah, health blah, insurance, blah. Right. Yeah. One of the th one of the oldest sayings about aging that I like a lot yeah. is that everybody wants to live a long time, but nobody wants to get old. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we shall leave you.
<laughs> Ronnie Bennett, the, as I like to say, the only Bennett in this room who really legally has that name. Did we explain that? We'll let it go. We'll yeah, do it well, well, we, we, I think we've explained it. Okay. Great talking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Go to uh, uh, timegoesby.net, okay? Yes. And that will reach you and it will reach her blog, which is Time Goes By, timegoesby.net. Read it. It's terrific. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Take care, darling.